Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Linda McSweeney. I'm the Education Manager for Photo Wildlife Park. Um, this afternoon, I just want to give you an overview of one of the collaborative projects that involved ourselves and another collection here in Ireland as well. Um, so I'm not going to bore you. I'm not going to take too long. Um, the event itself was called the Great Irish Zoo Off, which I think was very, very appropriate. Uh, there were three collaborations effectively at work here. It involved the Rediscovery Centre in Dublin, um, Photo Wildlife Park, and another Piazza approved collection, which is Galway Atlanta Aquaria as well. Um, in terms of the Rediscovery Centre, you may ask, who are they? What do they do? But effectively, it's Ireland's national centre for the circular economy in Ireland. It was established back in 2009. It has, without doubt, one of the, 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 the most excellent uh, so to speak, education programs uh, in Ireland as well, with sustainability as its core objective. And that very much linked the three organisations together. Um, thankfully, the Rediscovery Centre were actually responsible for conceiving the idea of the Great Irish Zoo Off. Um, and we were, we were very enthusiastic uh, about getting involved with it as well. In terms of the funding for this event, where was it generated from? It came from the Science Foundation Ireland, uh, which was established in 1983. As many of you know, it's the National Foundation for Investment in Scientific and Engineering Research here in Ireland. And the recipients of funding in this case were the Rediscovery Centre. And um, they applied for it through the same STEM and sustainability uh, project area as well. So in terms of what do we do? What was its purpose? Effectively, the objective that we had in mind was to highlight the diversity of species within both collections, uh, taking into account what we have here in Dublin, or Dublin rather, what we have here in Photo Wildlife Park, but also in Galway Atlantic Aquaria. But the overall objective was to emphasize the use of STEM in both of our collections and how important it is in the 21st century as well. So it was designed to coincide with National Biodiversity Week here in Ireland, uh, which ran from the week of the 15th to the 23rd of May. Um, it had a lot of commonalities with it. And the target audience in particular, um, it was aimed specifically at primary and secondary school students throughout Ireland. Um, but of course, we also wanted to include members of the public. And um, we were very con con conscious in COVID times uh, that many children were being homeschooled for a variety of reasons as well. So the idea was to encourage, in particular, quite a lot of DESH schools. Um, and DESH schools are those that are defined in Ireland as coming from disadvantaged areas. And there are about 829 of those at primary and post-primary level as well. So those are key, those are target audience as such going forward. In terms of the event itself, this is a snapshot um, from the day and involved myself. Noreen for Galway Atlantic Aquaria, who's the Director of Education there, and Sarah Clear, who oversees the Rediscovery Centre. Um, now, we were very fortunate because the Rediscovery Centre were responsible for hosting the event, uh, which meant any of us, particularly myself, let it be said, who, who certainly isn't the most technologically advanced, uh, they, took the, they took on board. They were responsible for the live streaming of the event on the day as well. Um, the event itself was just over 60 minutes in duration. Roughly about 25 minutes of that had been pre-recorded in both collections. There was a 15-minute Q&A session towards the end of that as well. And the whole thing effectively turned out to be very positive for all involved. So in terms of what did we do? We effectively, um, we looked at a variety of projects that are here that are ongoing here in Ireland. Um, we looked at the role of genetic analysis in relation to the red squirrel population here in Fota. We also looked at the use of technology with regards to rewilding certain species, such as the European bison. Um, one that's very, very important to us here in Bota as well is the reintroduction of the natterjack toad and the supplementation of stock here in Ireland, uh, which is an ongoing project that we have here in Bota. And finally, we also use, looked at the use of STEM in relation to enrichment programs, uh, specifically the cheetah race that was established here in Bota in the late 1990s. So in terms of, I suppose, the, the project that we actually did, there are quite a large number of them. But with regards to the Red Squirrel project, we evaluated genetic analysis. We looked at the landscape-wide distribution of genetics across Boat Island itself. The information that we gathered um, was very beneficial in allowing us to determine whether or not we needed to translocate additional Red Squirrels from locations throughout Ireland to Photo Wildlife Park to help sustain them long-term. In terms of the European bison project that we actually have here that's ongoing, again, photos very much involved in the rewilding of the European bison back into certain areas such as Romania, 
Poland in the coming months. We're also going to be involved in the reintroduction for them back into the new forest in the UK, which we're very, very excited about. The third one, the Nash Jack Toad, is a collaborative project between not just Photo Wildlife Park, but also the National Parks and Wildlife Service here in Ireland and also Dingle Aquarium. And to date, we have actually released about 6,400 toadlets back into Kerry here in Southern Ireland on behalf of the National Parks and Wildlife Service as well. So it's a project, collaborative project, whereby the National Parks and Wildlife Service remove toadlets and spawn um, from during the breeding season in Kerry. They bring them here to holding ponds. We breed them over the course of several months. And as soon as they've metamorphosed, we release them back into the wild. So it's one of those programs that that photo remains committed to, and hopefully that we can expand on in the coming years as well. And the final one that we actually looked at on behalf of Photo Wildlife Park, looked at technology, in particular the cheetah race, which is often used as a source of enrichment in various zoological collections around the world. And we looked at the benefits it had in relation to both the physical and psychological well-being of the cheetahs that we own during captivity. In relation to Galway Atlantic Aquaria, I presume that I may be doing them an injustice in terms of what their speak was in relation to it. Um, Noreen very much and her team very much focused on citizen science, uh, the monitoring and evaluation of indigenous species here in Ireland, using organizations such as the National Biodiversity Data Centre. He looked at the role of sustainable food and um, the use of lump suckers, relatively unusual fish, so to speak. Um, they play a very important role in agriculture and fish farming here in Ireland as well, and how they're bred to remove parasitic lice of an array of captive uh, fish species, such as salmon, for example. And finally, then she also touched upon marine spatial planning. We looked at the tagging of marine species, uh, special emphasis referring to the monitoring of uh, different turtle species. Um, and again, she used a, a wide variety of footage, not just from the aquarium, but also from those that were taken in wild, on board a number of research vessels here in Ireland as well. So I have to admit that working with the team in Galway was the highlight of this project. Um, they were not only an extremely informative team to work with, but were very open to any ideas that we cast, literally, um, and were very, very enthousi enthusiastic rather about getting involved as well. So in terms of public engagement, um, did we actually meet our objectives? Bearing in mind that we were targeting both primary and secondary school students, Effectively, we received over 562 bookings through Eventbrite, and this was the platform through which members of the public, schools at primary and secondary level could actually make bookings. Um, and the breakdown of those bookings effectively accounted for over 14,500 students at primary and secondary level. Uh, the remaining ones that you see there, just over 120 of those, um, they didn't clarify as to, to what sector of society that they had actually come from, but effectively we, I suppose, we managed to attract substantial interest on the day that the event took place itself. And furthermore, in recent months, it's also attracted just over further 960 viewings on Facebook as well, so, and on YouTube rather. So if any of you are desperate enough, if you have 60 minutes to spend of your spare time, then that YouTube video is still available for all to see and to give you a greater detail as to what the event exactly, um, I suppose, was made up of, so to speak, on the day. In terms of indirect engagement, we had just, I suppose, in terms of social media platforms, Facebook proved to be the most popular of all, with just over 1,300 uh, views on it, uh, with Instagram and, and Twitter just having just over 70 views between those. In terms of the promotion of the event, I think leading up to it, there was a lot of enthusiasm from Science Foundation Ireland, and they provide us with a lot of backup. Um, between ourselves, Galway Atlantic Aquaria, the Rediscovery Centre, we had very much highlighted that this was going to be an epic battle and that at the end of it, uh, that students would have the opportunity to decide who was the overall winner. Would it be land or would it be sea? Um, and they were asked to actually vote towards the end of that collaboration and the end of our, our virtual workshop on the day. So in terms of the evaluation overall, how, how good did we do? Did we do any good at all, let it be said? In terms of the audience breakdown, Predominantly, it was aimed, or at least received, 84% of views came from primary school students, uh, with the remainder split between individuals, families, and secondary schools. Now, we had hoped to have a significant percentage of secondary schools involved in this, um, but unfortunately, the, the week in which it took place tended to coincide with a lot of in-house summer exams that were being held in secondary schools as well. So that, without doubt, impacted our audience figures on the day. However, 
in terms of the overall evaluation, in terms of learning something new, the educational value, the overall enjoyment, it scored anywhere between 84 to 100 percent, with 100 percent of all respondents suggesting that they enjoyed the event thoroughly, um, which was for certainly for, for ourselves and the team here in Galway Atlantic Aquaria was very much welcomed and, and enthused us. And let it be said to go on and actually become more involved with more of these collaborative projects as well. So in terms of the benefits associated with it, first and foremost, we reached an audience in excess of 14,000 individuals during the live feed. Um, we promoted both zoological collections way above and beyond our normal geographical reach, which was well received. Um, I think it also very much helped to highlight the important role, uh, the educational role that zoological institutions have to offer, something that's often overlooked here. And I think certainly from my perspective and that of Noreen's, it very much introduced and emphasised that we're working together with a common objective, and that's biodiversity or species conservation. I think all too often, as individual collections, that we often perceive ourselves to be in competition with each other. Uh, but I think the overall success and the experiences that we gained from this would suggest that going forward, we will be involved in far more of these collaborative works as well. So then the lessons learned, certainly from my perspective, I think we worked collaboratively, collaboratively rather, to allow us to draw on each other's strengths and weaknesses. Um, very, very importantly, it allowed us to develop strategic relations with external organizations such as the SFI and the Rediscovery Center. And from my own perspective, it actually allowed me to, to I suppose, form not just strategic relations with SFI, but it actually allowed us to receive a lot of additional funding uh, for projects. And we've received that in, in just over the last six weeks from them as well. So there's a level of connectivity there that didn't exist, maybe going back to, to the start of 2021. And I suppose most importantly, it also allowed us to use the content that we generated from this work. We've used it on a variety of our social media platforms as well. So we've been able to connect uh, with, with basically members of Photo Wildlife Park. Uh, we've been able to offer them an insight as to what goes on behind the scenes and to very much emphasize the important role that we are conservation education organizations as well. So that's mine in a Snapchat. That's a very quick overview as to what our collaboration involved. Um, as I mentioned, it is still live on YouTube if anyone has an interest in actually looking at it in greater detail. So that's, that's it for me, short and sweet, unfortunately, Lizzie. <laughs>